Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane, this video is part of my favorite series, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite PlayStation 2 games. When the PlayStation 2 came out, I was really big into collecting and had uh, a lot of disposable income and not a lot of responsibilities. I basically tried to purchase almost every single PlayStation 2 game that even looked remotely fun for me. And I got a lot of really good games, and I got a couple of bad ones too. But these are just my fa some of my favorite PlayStation 2 games. They're not in any particular order. And with that, let's get on with it. So first up, we have the Dot .hack series by Bandai, in, released in 2002. I know it's kind of cheating to, to name a whole series, but I just don't feel like naming them individually. I love how this is a game that is simulating an MMO experience, and that it's not just restricted to that, and that the DVDs came along with it. I even got into the Dot .hack card game and stuff, and played that quite a bit. It was, it was a triple threat. They had the anime, they had the, the game, the video games, and they had the card game. This is a wonderful series. I love the idea that you can basically take all of the progress that you have and upgrade to the next version of the game, and it, that was just very attractive for me. You know, it's a, it's a great series, and I believe that if you have a PlayStation 2, or if they re-release these digitally, which I'm hoping they do with the PlayStation 5 or maybe even the PS4, you should definitely check it out. Now, next up, speaking of being up upgrading and everything like that, is the Armored Core series. I released by From Software in 2000. I was a big fan of the Armored Core series in the beginning, when they were on the original PlayStation, and honestly, all of the good things from that that era have continued on into the PlayStation 2. And I believe that they have, you know, continued that on in the PlayStation 3 as well. Although I have not had a chance to really sit down and play the PlayStation 3 part of the series in depth. But it's basically Armored Core. You get parts, you get money, you do missions, you do, you know, whatever hoops they want you to jump through. And, it, you know, it's, it's an upgrade grind. But it's a fun one as well. So you can check that one out as well. Now, one of my really high-end favorite games is Devil May Cry 2001 by Capcom. This game was awesome. I thought it was the way that a 3D Castlevania should have always been. Instead of what happened on the Nintendo 64, unfortunately. Not that I'm trying to badmouth any particular games or anything like that, that's not what my channel is about. I really just want to talk about things in a more positive light than anything else. But Devil May Cry was just this wonderful experience where everything just kind of fit, and there was, you know, camera changes and stuff during the action, but it was forgiving in a sense, where suddenly, like, Oh, just because you didn't have the exact timing of a camera change, you suddenly were running in the wrong direction and that was it. You were dead instantly. You know, they, they never punished for anything that they did to be, to be aesthetically pleasing. So, and that, and it was just a lot of fun, a lot of good music in with the game. And it played very well. It's just great. Next up we have Dynasty Warriors 2 and 3. Released by Koei Tenko, or Tecmo, yeah, sorry, in <laughs> uh, 1997, I believe is like when the first first ones were released. And I think that was the first Dynasty Warriors as well. But run around beat 'em up games, Dynasty Warriors has has not changed their formula, and they don't need to. They might change a map or two, or they might even change like what the characters are. I mean, I've, I've loved Dynasty Warriors since they've changed to the massive 3D beat-em-up style game. Even even some of the variants where it's you're playing as 
as Link, or you're playing as a Gundam. You know, it just, it really works. It's definitely worth going back and seeing where all of those games have come from. And Dynasty Warriors 2 and 3 are a great starting point. Next up we have God of War by Sony Interactive Entertainment, released in 2005. Guys, it's God of War. You run around 3D beat em up you get to play the stories, you get to solve all the different puzzles, uh, you get to try to kill gods. You know, it just, everything that's so over the top and you feel like the baddest of the bad when you finally beat the game and stuff and everything is just constantly feeding into that feeling of feeling, you know, that you're just, you're it. You're the, you're the Alpha and the Omega. You are the absolute warrior of everything and nothing really matches that feeling. I love games that make you feel that way and this is definitely one of them. Now, next up we have Robotech Battle Cry by Vicious. Vicious Cycles Software. It's released in 2002. This is a great game. I love the Robotech games. Battle Cry is also a pretty good one with being able to run around and, you know, shoot at the enemies and whatnot and just make it through the various levels. And it, there's a little bit of a, a feeling of desperation within the game where you're just struggling to survive, and I really do like that, that style of storytelling. Next up, speaking of games that make you feel like you are the baddest of the bad is Spy Hunter 1 and 2 by Midway Games released 2000, starting their releases in 2001. Just the last level with the music blaring in Spy Hunter 1, all the things that you jump through, I mean, you, you feel like you are the hero. You feel like you are that that BA, you know, that that you cannot be stopped, that you are just completely beyond anyone else. You know, your enemies have no chance against you because you are that good. You know, that that it, again it just speaks to that feeling. Next up we have SSX 3 and SSX Tricky, released by EA Sports in 2000. I'm not going to get into the negativity of EA. I am. I will say that I've recently been more disappointed than I have been happy with EA, but I hope they turn that around. But back to more positive things, SSX 3 and Tricky are just good fun games. Having having fun with friends, competing on how who can get the most tricks, who can get the highest score, or racing, or anything like that. The music is just great. It goes along with the game. They just... It's a game that is so much fun and over the top, and, and a little bit tongue-in-cheek with that as well, that you just, it's almost just this huge uplifting feeling where you're just having fun and that's all it really is, is just having fun. There's, yeah, there's a little bit of competitiveness with it in some of the later races and stuff like that, but honestly, just the, the, the freestyle races and the freestyle trick areas and stuff where you're just running through and doing tricks for having, you know, to just do them and have fun. It's a great set of games. If you have a PlayStation 2, please pick up SSX3 and Tricky. You will not regret it. You will have tons of fun with it. On a more serious note, Zone of the Enders by Konami in 2001 is this beautiful game. When I first saw this combat style, I immediately thought, this is what a Dragon Ball Z game should be. And I really do like it. It's a great story. It's Konami in its heyday. 
you know, of, of just beautiful storylines and having the money to do whatever they wanted to do. And this time they wanted to create this beautiful world that no one's ever seen before and take this little kid and put them in this, put the kid in these situations and stuff. And in the last fight, just a little bit of a spoiler, I got so good at Zone of the Enders. In the last fight, I did not run away from the last boss. I actually took the fight to the last boss, hoping to defeat him, hoping to beat him down to the point where he couldn't do anything. And every single one of my combos ended up with a stun and me dodging around all the time. This is another game that where you just feel like you're, you know, you're the best of the best if you take it that far. And it's just a wonderful experience to have. And I highly suggest getting Zone of the Enders. I do know that there is a PlayStation 3 remake that's in HD. And if you cannot get it on PS2, definitely get it on PlayStation 3. Well, that's it for this episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host, Mundane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.